There have been so many times when I have taught my research method students about research philosophy and they either sigh or they hide their hands and their face in despair and you know what it can sound a bit complicated but it doesn't have to be which is why I am making this short video today to give you an introduction to research philosophy why we need it what it is let's do this if you're new here my name is Dr Hayley Sainton and I've marked and taught an awful lot of research projects and research methods students so I'm giving you my tips and advice based on my years in the classroom and my years marking students work so believe it or not there is more to research than whether you choose qualitative or quantitative an interview or a survey in fact what you should do is to dig down to the roots of your chosen methodological path to enable you to provide a thorough explanation of why your chosen research method is suitable for your research project. Now if you're not sure what I mean by this, think of it as a tree. The leaves are the final product and would not grow without the branches, the trunk and the roots. The growth of all of these elements relies on the right conditions, sunlight, healthy soil, the right temperature, etc. Research philosophy is essentially the roots on the tree. Once they are established, all the rest will follow, given the right conditions. What's more is that different research philosophies follow quite clear, distinct paths. If the root is that of an apple tree, it doesn't produce the leaves of a maple tree. Instead, it follows a predictable evolution of growth. This is the same for research philosophy. Once you've decided on a method of data collection, the leaves, it's very simple to work your way back through the roots to establish the methodology, epistemology and ontology which underpin it. Now I know those last few words may have sounded a little bit complicated but they really don't have to be I promise and one way of understanding this is to look at the research onion. Now I don't want to overcomplicate things in this video but you can learn more about the research onion in my video that I have made all about that. Okay, so let's dig a little bit deeper into these research philosophy pathways. To properly explain your chosen research methodology, you will need to discuss each level, starting with the broad research philosophy through to the details of the methods of data collection. And most research methods, books and literature make this sound really complicated, but honestly, it doesn't have to be. Your methods chapter should flow logically through your chosen pathway. You might find it easiest to determine the pathway if you work backwards. Do you know how you want to collect your data, i.e. an interview or a survey? If so, start there. This will likely determine whether your research will be qualitative or quantitative. This will then tell you if you are taking an interpretative or positivist approach, which will, in turn, dictate whether you are using a nominalist or realist philosophy. Okay, so we follow the path. That's simple enough if you've got a map, which you pretty much do. It's in all the research books. So let's dig a little bit deeper into ontology. Ontology is an area of philosophy that deals with the nature of being or what exists. It is concerned with reality and is often presented with questions such as what is the meaning of being or what can be said to exist? There are two dominant positions within ontology. This is realism and nominalism. Realism is when the researcher views the world as existing separately from humans and their interpretations of it. Whereas nominalism is when the researcher believes that their interpretations of the world are based on their inner subjectivity and the personal lens through which they are viewing. And whilst this might sound simple to you, it's not that simple actually because researchers do not necessarily fall into one category or the other instead it's more of a spectrum and you could be placed at any point along that spectrum so let's now take a little bit more of a look into epistemology epistemology is an area of philosophy that is concerned with the creation of knowledge focusing on how knowledge is obtained and investigating the most valid ways to reach the truth 
Epistemology essentially determines the relationship between the researcher and reality. And it is rooted in the ontological assumptions that we just talked about. There are three significant branches within epistemology. This is empiricism, rationalism, and transcendental philosophy. An empirical researcher gives cognition, or understanding, a passive role, indicating that the object of study is recorded by the brain, but not produced by the brain. This image is then associated with similar objects, thus requiring the use of a concept. This concept is formed through a logical process known as induction. And as I do outline in my video on the research onion, induction works from the broad through to the specific. Initial data or specific observations are used to logically reach generalized conclusions. Inductive reasoning moves from specific observations to broader generalizations and theories. And although the results may suggest the truth, they do not ensure it, which is a limitation of induction. In contrast to this, we have the rationalist researcher. Rationalists regard logical reasoning as the active producer of concepts ex nihilo, meaning out of nothing, and therefore adopt a deductive logical reasoning process. Deduction occurs when an initial premise that is assumed to be true is used to determine what else must therefore be true. This is the opposite of inductive logic as it begins with initial theories or ideas that are then narrowed down to reach hypotheses. Providing the initial premise is correct, deductive logic can provide absolute proof of conclusions that are reached and it is strongly associated with scientific research. And in the middle of the two, we have transcendental philosophy. This is when the role in the construction of knowledge is questioned. Grounded in the belief that concepts and objects are not fixed, but are constantly evolving, transcendentalists believe the rationalist claim that objects are deduced from a general concept. They reject the claim that the concept is a product of ex nihilo. Instead, they argue that concepts are formed in one's consciousness through a combination of previous existing empty templates of reason, known as a priori categories, and the raw material of the object under study. In effect, transcendentalists believe that the templates of reason and the data acquired from the human senses change, and they develop continuously. Now, of course, that is just a very brief introduction, but for many research projects, you don't need to go into much more detail than that. So I hope that that has given you some idea and some food for thought. And I will put some references down in the reading list for you below and they can help you to understand this a bit further. And remember, as I have outlined in lots of my videos all about writing a research project, you will need references to support all of this. So you can't um, literally just repeat what I've told you. You do need some academic references in there. So those books that I put down in the description will be super handy for you. If you have any questions, do fire away in the comments below. And I know if you are writing a research project or a dissertation, you will find these videos really helpful too.